Hi, back again. Um, Whitaker reminded me to let you know that we are, um, within a month or so, we should be hitting our, our 2,500 uh, uh, subscribers. And uh, at that point, we're going to do another live video. So um, just a heads up about that before we say anything else. Um, last week's video got a real um, sort of a strongish response from my friend David, um, um, and I would I'm I'm not going to show the entire thing, but I'm but because it's very long, but uh, uh, and I'm going to excerpt some things out of it. But it's a discussion that continues from the week before when I was talking about subject matter and you know what's uh, what one ought to paint if you all remember that one. So. Um, uh, uh, with that in mind, um, uh, David, who's been a, f a friend for a long time and studied with me, <clears throat> um, has a uh, brings a lot of energy and uh, and 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 strength of of uh, of uh, uh, which will say commitment to his uh, conversations. And uh, so I do ask you to read that uh, when you get a chance, or even right now before you watch this video, if you haven't, if this isn't the first time you're looking at it, and just. Uh, just review what he said, and uh, hopefully you've already seen my video when you look at that. And uh, but just read it under the image. There's there's uh, under the video when you get the video. There underneath it should be his comments. So it's pretty long. Read it, and then uh, so you'll know uh, whether I'm treating him badly or not in this conversation. And uh, thank you, uh, David, for the question. And uh, uh, I take what you said uh, in your uh, way of you know, expressing things uh, the same way as I hope you'll take mine, and that is with uh, with a with a goodwill. Uh, I don't mean to be um, uh, uh, feisty or anything. So, uh, but there are points that are really interesting here. Uh, so here's Johnson, uh, David's comment. Uh, I put down as Rodman Johnson because that's what you put down, but I could have put down David. I wish I had now. I feel you like you buried the lead on this question, Paul. The debate is between traditional method painting with monumental potential versus contemporary realism hung up on craft without a mind to the importance of subject, uh, craft, and synergy. Now, I like this idea of the subject, craft, synergy, uh, but uh, what, and it's true that what uh, Jocko was talking about was this question of, uh, of uh, whether we should paint monumental pictures and uh, and it's about time to stop doing lesser things, you know, and that sort of thing. And I just simply put out that idea. I was trying to slightly uh, uh, diffuse the idea that there are lesser things. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not backing off, but I do agree, by the way, with David that I buried the lead. That was that was what I was precisely trying to do. I was trying to just not get into it. But David isn't David. I want you to look at what uh, Jocko said because I didn't bury the lead. Really, what he's his three main questions are, and I'm putting him in bold right here. Uh, what aren't we depicting that we ought to be? Uh, we need the noble Hellenistic Bernini moving, twisting spiral nudes, not just archaic uh, Hellenistic girl standing at a podium for no reason with no rhetorical gesture and no comment and no meaning in front of a gray wall. So that's uh, in the same class. And then he says, we need, we need murals depicting and reflecting all the best qualities of life. So there's a category of things that, uh, that, that Jocko is recommending. Uh, and uh, and I, I, do, I do understand that, uh, although it wasn't the way he focused his question, that uh, you all are in a conversation about, uh, and several of us in the representational world are in a question about the, the uh, sort of the, the, the noodling model of painting, you know, the realism model is just all about what it is and the subject, I'm not the subject, but the object and noodling and not on greater ideas about, um, shall we say, um, uh, you know, great subjects. Well, I'm really not doing that. That's not my point. I'm, my point is to say what was the nature of this form. And, uh, and so the, what ought we paint takes on a whole different color when you think that way. Um, now, what can this form be used for? It can be used for highfalutin stuff. It obviously can, but it doesn't define the form. And so let me just talk about some of the points here, and maybe I can get right back to it. Uh, and, and so the question of what you ought to paint takes on a different coloring is what I'm trying to say. So let's see. And so this is a continuing series of points by David. What, 
Why judge any form of painting style or perpetuate a tradition if all are equally beautiful in their own way? We know they're not. When an artist declares subject matter doesn't, subject doesn't matter because I'm the master of my craft, they've reached the height of arrogance. Perhaps we're modern trash artists. Wonderfully crafted? How incredibly sad. What ought to inform our choice of subject and how it's presented? What ought to form, inform our choice of subject and how it's presented? Uh, well, so <laughs> the implication there is that I was saying in my, in my uh, video, which you all can go back and look at, the What Ought We to Paint video, what I was saying there was, was uh, saying that, well, let me, let me pause for a second. I'll just take you over to Gamel. I think it's the next quote here, because this is where all this stuff comes from. So um, Gamel it was that said, subject is nothing. He said it to me directly, and he said it in a loud voice. <laughs> it was memorable. He says, it's a lubricant, something to keep you in the studio. Well, yeah, and, I, and, and my suggestion is that's probably true. Every single one of us has probably a preference in terms of subject. The more younger you are and the more figure-oriented, probably the more sort of, if you want to talk about arrogant, the more we arrogate to ourselves that it ought to be something important. And, uh, and yet I remember it my own, in my own day as a student, uh, knowing in my mind that I might have something important per subject, but I'm going to paint it with the limited knowledge of a fairly young mind and a, and a fairly undeveloped soul, if you want to put it that way in some ways. And therefore, I had this serious question about the role of, a, of an, un, you know, of, of saying important things when you don't actually have life experience, let's put it that way, and depth. So, uh, so I would say, I was sitting there th thinking to myself, well, then what do you do? Do you sit there for 20 years until you get some life experience <laughs> and some depth, or do, you, or do you do something else? And what that something else is is rather interesting, especially in the light of what Gamble says, subject is nothing but a lubricant, something to keep you in the studio. Now, Gamble did say that. He said those three things at three different times to me and in other places. And, uh, and I know there are people that were with Gamble that argue that that isn't so. But, you know, I was, frankly, I was alone in the studio with Gamble. <laughs> and he was asking me questions about a show I'd just been to visit. So I want you to make sure you understand that, that I don't make this stuff up. But Alfred Stebbins then says the same thing. Gamble was a huge fan of Alfred Stebbins and promoted his uh, thinking. And uh, so what Alfred Stebbins says, when people cease to take interest in painting, historical subjects are developed, right? And so what, is that, what does that actually mean? That's a really fascinating question. What are they taking, when they cease to take interest in painting? Well, what is painting? And so, and how is that different from historical subjects? Very important historical subjects. Does it, the fact that they're interested in historical subjects mean that they're no longer interested in painting? Well, that's a really interesting proposition, isn't it? But a subject isn't necessary to a painting, okay? Huh. So what's a painting? <laughs> what does he mean by a painting? A subject isn't necessary to a painting. And he's talking about a good painting. He's not talking about dabbing slop on the wall somewhere. You know, He's not talking about anything like that. He's talking about a painting in the highest sense of that word. And pictures shouldn't need literary descriptions. And that, of course, would be what you talk about. And I don't need to get into that, except to say that we're talking always about uh, the thing has to perform as an art without knowing what the subject is, even if it has an important subject or a quote important subject. So, but that's the Gamble conversation. And uh, so if we can just go back to David's, um, uh, so why judge any form of painting style or perpetuate a tradition if all are equally beautiful in their own way? Or no, they're not. Well, so here's an interesting question. The, 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 wor the work of the Renaissance, that kind of work, is different from the work uh, once you get down to past Velasquez. They work in very different ways. So we're starting to say that, what's the tradition? So these are two traditions now. Are they not equally beautiful in their own way? I'm not that guy, by the way, who's saying that. I'm saying to a student. I've never been the guy, by the way, who says that, that this is superior in some art way, in some w w aesthetic way. I'm saying that what we have here for a student in teaching the way I teach is we have, is we have a, 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 way, a way of incorporating fully every aspect of painting in the educational process so that you fully address nature as it appears. And I think that's the most valuable thing to do. But if you ask me what's the most valuable way to, to that is not the same question as asking me what's the, what's the best stuff to teach. You know, this, the, 
what I mean to say is the best stuff to teach is not necessarily having anything to do with, with the other forms. So we separate academic, and that is, I'm sorry, I should have said academic, yeah, and I should probably say slash imaginative painting. We do separate that from impressionist painting, which is painting the subject as you see it, you know, straight from life, sitting out there right in front of you. So, um, uh, so are, is one of those more beautiful than the other? I find it hard to say that one is more beautiful than the other. They're equally beautiful. However, that doesn't take in the entire world of people who do crap on the wall and call it something, you know, who throw mud, whatever, and just every version of that kind of stuff has got nothing to do with that. And that's, and, and of course, uh, David, you imply that I'm saying that, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't think that. So when an artist declares subject doesn't matter because I'm the master of my craft, now you're saying something else. They've reached the height of arrogance. Well, I don't know that they have actually. Subject doesn't matter because I'm the master of my craft. What is your craft? If you think it's just noodling, then you would, that you and I would probably agree. If the craft is just noodling up realism, then you and I would agree. But if you said that you're the master of this form, you would know that subject doesn't matter. And it's not arrogance. It actually is real. It's the truth. So, um, um, so let me, let me um, just see if I can um, find another bit of a point here. And I'm not, um, and let me just tell you about this though, because uh, my comment in, in the, in the um, under David's, my reply under David's comments to me is, not surprisingly, Gamble's and Steven's points about subject choices continue to baffle many people. There's no way that's not true. I see that all the time, and I know how long it took me to wake up. But you can't, you, you want to watch that. Don't dismiss so quickly if you, if you don't know precisely what is meant. And, and, and I'm not saying it to you, David. I am saying it to you, I guess, but I'm saying it just in general. My singular intention in this video was to remind us to focus on the central uh, ought, the good, the beautiful, and the true. So I'm reading my letter for the elevation of the human soul and avoid false classifications. Now, false classifications, when it comes to, to, to uh, uh, whether still life or a grandiose statement uh, of some sort or a historical moment in something or other that was very important, uh, if you think that one of those elevates the form, fine, then paint it. But if, but if you actually know that the form itself, that what I'm calling music, is not elevated by that, then you'd have a different discussion with yourself. Now, this is, I know, exactly where you want to just have the battle, I guess you'd say. Um, uh, so I'll come back to that. But I'm surprised that I have to express what I repeatedly implied, that, that beauty can be found all around us. Okay. Who was it, the poet, who said that the universe can be seen in a flower? And, uh, and you know my proposition never suggests you can call the gross the disgusting and the poorly designed and the ugly beautiful. And Ang didn't either when he says, I can see beauty where you don't see it, where you see ugliness. But I ask you, when you tell a student to aim high, does that mean aiming at doing murals and multi-figured complicated allegories or does it mean something else? And my question is for you, for the guy, the Chardin in this world, why does he continually elevate as a, as, as in our form, why does he continually elevate above historical painters of his day and the decorative painters of his day? Why does he do that? What, what is it that he's doing that keeps those humble still lives, you know, uh, makes them so important and continues to make them important. Now you can dispute that with me, but, <laughs> but I, but, um, so, and so let's going back to the subject. I really like the idea of synergy. And let's see, I think you make that point. Let's see if I can find that point again where I like it. Uh, well, you said in the beginning here, you say, um, without a mind to the importance of subject craft synergy. Uh, that really is a concept that's a, that's a good one. Uh, and especially true of when you're telling, when you're doing a storytelling picture, right? So, and I, by the way, if you're doing an illustration where nobody will ever see the surface of the canvas, I'm not sure what you mean by craft. If you mean drawing or if you mean design, that's all true. If you're talking about the paint quality of the surface that may never show, that, that's obviously a different thing. On the other hand, when you're looking at an actual painting, sometimes that surface can make a difference. 
it doesn't usually make much of one. So when I think of craft, I'm always thinking about the way paint moves. But it's also, craft also means just drawing skills, design skills, and, um, and um, you know, the ability to articulate a, a form and a complex f figure, for example, accurately. So those are all good. But, and all we're really saying though, is when you talk about the synergy, you're saying that when you have a subject, of course your, your, uh, your craft, your way of working, should fit that subject. And this applies especially when the subject takes the lead, right? And the craft follows, the craft is supporting. But at the end of the day, one of the difficulties that some people have is, is in saying that what makes my, my, my um, uh, uh, illustration lesser. So often it's just treated that way over historical times that an illustration is somehow lesser than other than, than, than a pure form, like we call fine art and all that sort of thing. Now, I don't blame the irritation of those, of, of those uh, illustrators who find fault with that thinking because it isn't necessarily so. But I suggest to you that when subject dominates, there's a, there's a likelihood that the, the, the form is going to be lesser. Uh, but it's not necessarily so. So, for example, you get a guy like Degas doing those dancers, and, the, and, the, and, and he starts with dancer. He's got a subject theme and all that sort of stuff. But, but it isn't very long before the entire thing is taken over by the color scheme, by the distribution of, of, of curves or, or, uh, or of, 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 of gestural units, you know, and their play, their interplay with each other. So Degas becomes this musician of form at the expense of the subject. Now, you could say that's one of the reasons why he chooses a very, shall we say, light subject. You know, what's just happening? The girls are just coming off the floor after having performed. Or, or they're doing something on the floor, this part of the dance, and it's interesting how it works with the, with the background props and that sort of thing. But, uh, so you could say that a simplified, he's finding that a simplified and not too important series of storytelling things in the picture are, uh, you know, have to be worked on and worked on and worked on and really made right. And he's sort of escaping in a sense, but you know, that's a kind of an interesting question. So when you do look at, say, just a sort of an average illustration and you look at his, I think you'll notice, I think the average person will notice there's a difference in the music. There's one that's very strong in the story and has a good pattern and all that sort of stuff. Everything else being equal, let's put it that way. And yet you can, that you can sense that one of them is, as it were, of a different purpose, has a different motive. That's all, nothing more than that. And that makes it rather slightly a different form, right? Now I say that meaning, now we're, now we're talking about a complex form. It's a form that's illustrative with the help of the decorative, which is, David implies in a different place. And, uh, or it's the other way around, where it's actually taking whatever subject and actually making sure it finds the music there and, and then presents it as music, okay? Not presents it as a story, presents it. You can see it. Anyway, if you have eyes, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so let's go past that. And by the way, this isn't intended to be the end of this conversation. I'm not sure I'm going to keep on addressing it the way I'm doing it here. But uh, so why judge any form of painting style or perpetuated tradition if all are equally beautiful? Um, uh, okay, so, no, so, so when an artist declares subject doesn't matter because I'm the master of my craft, and by the way, that's not what an artist says. I don't think, I, I don't think anybody says that. I don't think Gamble said that, and I don't think uh, Stevens said that. They've reached the height of arrogance. So I, you know, maybe somebody else, but not those guys. Perhaps we are modern trash artists, wonderfully crafted. Uh, and uh, so how incredibly sad, what ought to, to inform our choice of subject and how it's presented. So, um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a, that's a, per, a perfectly fair question. What ought to present, uh, what ought to uh, inform our subject? Uh, now, I managed to get that in. I meant, I meant to not put that in this section. I meant to get this one and not that one, so I apologize to that. So here is, here's the earlier part of the statement. As an art form, oil painting itself bestows upon the subject a type of honor and nobility. So yes, what you'd say is what you choose to paint you choose, you're going to choose to honor it ideally, right? And so you can say that painting, oil painting doesn't honor anything, oil painting is just oil painting, right? So, but you could say painting it is like a way of saying, uh, you're important, I'm gonna put you on the wall, right? And by the way, but the, but, but the, but the, 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 the radicals in painting, you know, who, who believe that politics is the thing, and that's the most important thing in painting, they agree with that. 
<laughs> the, um, the, the, uh, the subject is it's an honoring. They're, they're honoring you know, their, their Marxist agenda or some such thing, right? That's their thing, to, to, or, or social justice or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but oil painting itself doesn't bestow anything except it does sort of say, I'm going to say, here, I'm putting it on the wall. That makes it, you know, it's the putting it on the wall that gives it this place of honor. The master seeks a design to elevate the art. So uh, that, part's, that part I agree with. The, 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 uh, to the extent that you, you have something of value, you, of course you want to elevate. You want to, you want to say what you think, right? So, so it's, it's like an impressing an opinion or a sense on it, on the subject. And of course that's true, but that's true of every single thing I paint, right? So I'm always looking to elevate that, to actually bring forth the thing that I admire, the thing that, I, that I'm moved by. Yeah, and to honor it. That's very true, right? Um, and, but the synergy between craft and subject in a painting can be truly monumental. Uh, well, yeah, monumental is kind of an interesting word. I, the synergy between a craft and a subject, uh, there's a word maybe like appropriate, or um, I'm not sure that I know what monumental means in that context, but this is to me where the ought is crucial to the future of any culture, especially when the media used uh, is capable of surviving hundreds and perhaps thousands of years. Perhaps we are modern trash artists, that's where that comes from. So, by the way, wherever I put dot, dot, dot in here, it means he had a bunch of stuff in between there, but I'm trying to touch on the, the significant, the major points without doing all the illustration parts. You'll have to read the rest for yourself. Anyway, the synergy between craft and subject in a painting can be truly monumental. This, to me, is where the art is crucial to the fruit of any color of any culture. But this starts sounding, uh, David, you start sounding political here, and uh, and this is what's happened to painting. It's become politicized, and it's not what the form is. The form doesn't know politics. It's blind to it, and and it doesn't know uh, religious dogma. It's blind to it. The form does not does not do that. Now you could say the the artist has has a religious dogma and he's painting some aspect of it. Maybe he's painting a historical part, life of Christ or whatever, and uh, and um, those things are important culturally, right? Or or they happen to help you understand the culture you're in, maybe. But uh, but is our form there primarily for some political or some other? Uh, um, um, what should we say? You know, so the elevation of one political idea over another. That's modern art, right? Well, I mean, so, so what, well, there are universals, by the way. So let's, let's talk about that in a very serious way. There are such things as universals. And we expect, for example, love to show forth. That's probably the greatest universal there is, isn't it? Love. And, and um, so if you say that and you're that big, then you're okay, right? Let's talk about, let's, let's, ele so, but your painting is supposed to be already full of that. You shouldn't have to explain the idea of love, right? Show cupids flying around and all that sort of stuff. Um, what was that? Was it Alfred Stevens, I think, who said that, uh, or maybe it was Millet, who said, he said that the Oriental paintings are, are made with love. They're, 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 yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful statement, an important one. Perhaps we've said enough about this, um, uh, but... So, but the thing I'm, I'm, I'm not good with this to be, you know, is, is I, 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 I did, uh, as, as we said, I did uh, bury the lead and I buried it purposely because I actually wanted to, to have you look at all the paintings that we looked at yesterday in the last video rather and, uh, and just say which one of them should we get rid of because it's not in the, in, in the class of important. Which one ought not somebody have painted? And, uh, and, you know, and so we can start this erasure of history because somebody said something, did a painting that was magnificently beautiful, but it wasn't about something important. I don't know. So it's a, it, to, me, it's, to me, it's treacherous ground. And, I've, you know, on the other hand, I am definitely not even beginning to say that doing trash and ugliness and all that stuff has anything to do. You, you saw in all the work I showed, you saw in all my discussions of it, and I even said it in so many words that the idea of elevating the soul is the thing, right? I may have said elevating the mind. So, uh, in any case, yeah, the form itself does that too. So, I don't know. I hope this is helpful to somebody, but I, um, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else I should say. Um, uh, I just, I'll just end there. Uh, and, uh, you, know, was, you know, with this sort of a slight defense of my, of my, um, of my, of my uh, work in that video. 
Uh, it is true, though, that that's the question of the importance of subject is a, is a stinker. Uh, we have high ideals for man. And we have high ideals for ourselves and, and what we talk about and all that sort of thing. But when you're talking to students, and that's my point again at the very last, I want to say again, when I'm talking to students, and I'm, I'm definitely asking them to aim high, I'm not asking them to aim at painting murals or important pictures or anything in particular. I teach people who will never do anything but still is. Are those people somehow demoted to, to trash makers or something? Or do they have in their hands the, the possibility of elevating the human mind, the human soul, and that focal, point, and that focal thing that the great arts do, that music does, that, you know, that the great arts do, right? So, all right. You're welcome to come back at me, uh, David. I'm not, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really inclined to pick this up and continue and continue because I think it's tedious for this viewer, but maybe not, maybe not. Let's see how people respond to this. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you, David, for that, uh, that set of comments. Uh, you and I agree about almost everything, so I think it's just a question of whether uh, my emphasis is, more, is, is, is adequately different from yours to, to create a, a, a stir. In any case. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Uh, don't forget, we're trying to do a, a live one uh, within the month, or by a month, from, about a month from now, so that would make it maybe the end of February. And uh, a number of you have said that you missed the first one, so I'll try to figure out ways, including talking about this every time we get on here. Uh, I, you know, I was talking about the other one several times. Uh, people, some, I know that a lot of you just cut off about this point, and uh, if you do, you sometimes miss an announcement. But I'll try to make sure my, um, my, um, uh, that Whitaker gets some of this stuff up so you can see it maybe even early on in the video. All right, good. All right, see you next time. Have a great week.